So none of this is very good. Yeah, that's broken head stud. Afternoon garage. So this is the greasy part. We're going to drop that motor out, uh, get it out, and kind of pull it apart a little bit, see if we don't have to do any major work to it, which I'm confident we won't. And then, uh, you know, put it all back together, nice and clean, get it up in there, get this car off the list so I can get some paint on it, then change the top. It should be done. <laughs> Boy, I've just started. All right, now I got access to the engine, but you can see how much neglect this thing has. This actually has a strut on it, and it's completely, completely wasted. Yeah, I think I'll pull this motor out. I can do a proper valve adjustment. But first, I'm going to, uh, oh, you know, do a compression test on all the cylinders. See what I get. It's pretty dirty. Well, bad news right from the start. Um, I'm not able to get four and five out. I don't know. Uh, looks like the plugs are. Well, they're stripped and they're in there. I can't get them out, so. Much, much, much later. All right, after getting the right spark plug socket on it, I was able to uh, use my <laughs> my boroscope, look down in there and see that the, the spark plug wasn't actually engaging in the end of the, the hex there. So I have a compression gauge here, and we'll use the same checklist as I did for the last car. Let's take those pressure measurements, get this engine out of here. All right, looks about uh, 170. So I'll just kind of continue. Two hours later. All right, got all the compressor measurements done. Um, look, looks like uh, number one was kind of hard to get to, but number two was a little bit high at, um, you know, it was approaching 180 and the rest of them were like 167 or somewhere in that neighborhood. So, well, that's good enough for me. Let's pull the motor and see if I have any broken head studs. Hopefully you don't have that and I well, just regasket the motor, put it back together. Just like the last one. All right, motor's out. Wow, look how dirty this is. I think what you're looking at here is a 1984 engine that's had zero maintenance. Maybe oil changes, but well, nothing else. What a mess. came out looks pretty gross looks about uh, about like the other one did uh, leaky valve covers uh, I took a lot of these um, exhaust bolts out beforehand because you know I had such a problem with them last time but yeah overall it's just a dirty motor and probably just gonna you know do a valve adjustment and cleaned up looks pretty good went to go do a valve adjustment found out these were quite tight so I need to figure out the clearances but first before I did that I wanted to check and make sure I had any broken studs because these are notorious for breaking studs and uh, well I got to this one here and well it just started spinning so there's a broken stud and it turns out that I have one on this side and one on the other side. So cams are going to have to come out, uh, the cam tower is going to have to come out. Um, I'm going to try to just extract the stud that's bad. But if I see any other damage in there, of course I'm going to have to take care of that first. And uh, boy, this just turned into a big job. 
all these rockers have to come out. I can see that this rocker shaft is actually slid out. So yeah, it's gonna need a little bit of work. Maybe I'll have to put in um, uh, the same thing that I did on the other 911 engine I worked on where I put in uh, valve seals and uh, rocker shaft seals and I'll probably do the whole damn thing. And boy, this isn't very good news, but um, hopefully I can just get in there and I don't have to split the case or anything. But this is kind of what happens when you work on these engines. Get it apart, at least it's clean. Well, this is terrible that I have two broken studs, one on each side of the motor, so this turned from an easy repair to a more difficult repair. And if you watched any of my videos I did last time on exhaust studs that I had broken off, I used a tool like this. It kind of just, you know, gets in there and mashes the threads. You tighten it up real tight and it takes the studs out. But I was thinking that I'd have a little more work to do on this one because they are M10 and they're also Loctited into the block and hopefully I can get enough purchase to get them out. But I got a thread uh, or a stud extractor sort of like this one. It has kind of like a cam situation in there. And well, you really destroy the stud getting it out, but that's okay because I'm gonna be buying all new studs anyway. I have a kit like this. This is, this is a really handy kit. It offers two different options for our M10. It has kind of like a kind of a hex head thing. People use these to install studs into an engine with these. I also had to get one of these. This kind of locks onto here, and you're able to torque your uh, your cam bolts on. I think they're pretty heavy torque numbers. So you definitely want to be able to support that well. And of course I had to get some kind of a Z block and we're going to be measuring the valve lift at top dead center on number one and then turn a 360 and then measure the valve lift on number four. So what you want is you want, ideally you kind of want the valve opening after top dead center at certain specifications. We'll have to go back to the manual, look what that would be. But before I tear this down completely, I think what I want to do is I want to check these and we'll see how close somebody had it. All right, I still have my tensioners installed here. So I got good tension on the chains on both sides. So I set the dial indicator to zero. So we're zeroed out pretty much there. Uh, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rotate so I get to top dead center. And we'll see what the lift is there. Starting to get lift here. Okay, looks like we got uh, 1.60 millimeter. So you can see that the valve's a little bit too too much open. Uh, spec is, you know, right in the middle of you know, 1.25. So, uh, well, let's move this Z-block to the other side. Check out number four. Spin this 360 and see what the other bank is. And we're in top dead center for piston number one. So we'll crank it around 360 for number four. All right, so that is number four there, and it's supposed to have valve overlap of 1.25 millimeters. You can see there's none. I'm definitely a top dead center here, so this isn't adjusted correctly. So this whole bank was uh, was not firing correctly. It was everything, all the valve timing would have been late. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna keep on turning. There we go, right there. So you can see it's actually many degrees off because it's supposed to be kind of, kind of start back here. But you can see I'm starting to generate some lift right here. And 1.25 would be approximately right there. And you can see how far this thing is off now. So let's get these tensioners out and get everything apart and, you know, replace the studs. And then we'll come back and we're going to have to reset this timing. And obviously it's not worthwhile noting where anything was because well this is incorrect and this other side over here it's pretty far off so yeah let's take everything apart change those studs out good too. Let's get these cam covers off, cam towers off, get the cylinders out.
three days later. All right, I got all the head studs out. That was freaking brutal. These things, look at this one. It just actually twisted. It didn't break or anything like that. This is one of the Dilavar studs that was in this position down here. It didn't It didn't snap off, thank God. But, but man, this took so much effort to try to take out. I had map gas in here and, well, lots of different things to take these off. But really, it was just kind of... Uh, sheer determination with a pipe wrench that took most of this off here. So anyway, what I was going to do here is I was going to uh, just kind of sneak in here and sneak out, maybe clean out the ceiling surface, put a new gasket down here, and then put the bucket on here and just leave the pistons right where they are. But I took a piston ring off and I started to look at them and on the inside of the ring there's lots of, well, there's just so much buildup in here of carbon Anyway, out comes the pistons. Make sure I know where they came from. All right, now it's time to take care of these heads here. So you can see that uh, this one I haven't really touched yet, and it's got all this sealant on here. And while that's not gonna make a good seal against the cam towers, I'm gonna have to take these valves out, and possibly, I, I tried kind of just scraping this off. This stuff is not coming off. It's uh, supposed to be an anaerobic sealant. It dries really hard. I'm going to leave all these studs in there. I kind of see that's what people do. And then we'll get the combustion chamber kind of fixed up, pull the valves, and run the valves through the wire wheel, and try not to disturb the seats too much. And uh, kind of lap these things back in there and put the, uh, put the valve springs and retainers back where they came from, put the valves back right where they came from. Get these things to where I have a smooth gasket surface here. Well, now that's probably as far as I'm going to go today. I got the heads cleaned up and, you know, got the intake manifold cleaned up kind of and, well, cleaned this up and started installing these head studs. It's kind of strange that, you know, I kept on talking about, I hope we don't have broken head studs and, well, I have broken head studs. So, uh, next time we'll be putting this back together and hopefully I don't have any parts that, you know, maybe I put in backwards or anything like that. Probably shouldn't have said that, but we'll hope for the best and uh, get this thing together quickly. You got anything out of this? Give me a like and subscribe if you haven't. Till next time.